Hey, hi there everyone, um, we're Ken and the screencast will talk about HTTP malware. So last time we checked out routes we create, then we created a controller methods. This time we'll dig into something different, which is called HTTP middleware. So basically HTTP middleware works as a gatekeeper to your application routes. What you can do inside middleware is you can make a decision whether this request will go forward to your route or not. So without wasting any time, let's create a simple yet useful middleware out there. Now guys, in order to create a middleware, you have to get into the directory called middleware inside HTTP folder. Out here, Adana ships with a middleware called body parser. We are not going to talk much about it. If you want, you can go through the source code, but we are going to create our own middleware right now. In order to create a middleware, I can say new file and I can create a file out here, or maybe we can do it in a better way. So I'll go to my command line. Here I'll run a command called node ace make middleware. And here we'll pass the name of the middleware. And let's say auth for now. It's going to create a middleware for us. So it says created odd.js middleware successfully. And if you go inside this directory, you can see there is a file called odd.js, which is basically an ESX class with a generator method called handle on top of it. Okay, this is the method that will be executed every time this middleware will be invoked. And out here, we can make a decision whether we want to send this request forward or not. So let's create a very simple middleware out here. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say constant name. Here, I will say request dot grant name and give it a default value. If it does not exist, uh, let's say foo. Next, I'm going to say is if name is not equal to Merck, that's my last name, we are going to say response dot status for one dot send not allowed and if the name is equal to work we will yield next now let's talk about what exactly we are doing out here very first we are grabbing the parameter from the request and we are saying give us the value for the parameter called name if the value is not equal to our desired value will make a response with a status called 401 and will send not allowed. And if this if statement is not true, obviously we will reach here. And in that scenario, we will yield next, which means we are asking this middleware to send this request forward. That's all really we need to do in order to create a simple basic middleware. Now, the next thing is, Whenever we create a middleware, we'll have to register it inside the kernel.js file, which is next to your routes file. The reason we have to register our middleware here so that Adonis knows that it has to execute this middleware. So out here we have two constants. One is called global middlewares. The other one is called named middleware. Now, global middlewares are those middlewares which will be executed on every single HTTP request and you really have no chance to decide whether you want to take it out from some particular request or not. Opposed to that, named middlewares are basically key value pairs that, and using those keys, you can decide on which route, which middleware will be called. So very first, we are going to create a global middleware. Out here, I'm going to say app, HTTP, middleware, and opt. Now, guys, basically, this entire string is a namespace. So the namespace starts with app. Now, if I go to the package.json file out here, all we have done out here is we have said, said auto load the entire app directory under a namespace called app. Now, if you are not getting it, don't worry about it. This is only that you need to remember for now. All we are doing inside our package file, we are saying auto load 
app directory inside a namespace called app. Now we are using that namespace here, and after that we are following the directory structure. All we are saying on here is get into HTTP middleware, grab the file called opt. Now we are done with registering our middleware. We can restart our server. Now let's see what happens. Here I'm going to say npm start. Restart server. Now here we say localhost three three. It says not allowed. Let's pass my name here. It says hello world. Now guys, I believe you have seen it's a very simple yet useful middleware. Now whenever we pass a name and if that name matches to work, it goes to the controller method. Otherwise, it's going to say not allowed. Let's try a different name. It says not allowed. Now the problem with global middleware is it will be executed on every single request. Let's create another route out here. Let's say we have a route called route.get about. So this is basically about page that talks something about our company or us. And here we're going to create a method called about on our controller called home controller. So this is our method. I'm going to say return VR awesome. Okay. Now again, we start the server. Come back, it does not work. But if I go to about, it says the same thing, not allowed, which is actually not the right thing. So what we can do is very first we can take this middleware off from the global array and, and we can create a named middleware out here. So here I'm gonna say bot and I'm going to actually paste the mapping out here. So what we are doing is we're defining a key that has to be unique. And you're saying this key will resolve to a middleware called opt. The next thing we're going to do is we'll get into our routes file. Out here, we'll say attach name middleware to this route and pass it as an array. So here we say dot middlewares and the middleware key is opt. Now go back, restart the server, refresh, about says we are awesome. But if I say John, it says John, I'm really sorry, you're not allowed, but work is allowed. So guys, here we have seen how flexible and how powerful middlewares are. All you really need to do is create a new file that's going to be an ESX class. Make sure to export it with a handle method on top of it. You can make use of request response with a next variable out here. And next, you have to register those middleware depending upon their nature inside the Chromium file. Like a body parser has to be a global middleware so it can parse body for every single request. Whereas the auth middleware has to be specific to routes. But there is another problem out here. Let's say we have multiple routes who are going to make use of this middleware called opt. So all we need to do is we have to copy paste them back and forth. Also, it's going to be another problem if you have to chain them to something else. That's the reason we can make use of route groups. Now, let's go back to official documentation inside routing. Here it says route groups, and it shows us how exactly we can create route groups. We can prefix them with something. We can attach middlewares to uh, groups. We can also create subdomains but we are not going to talk about subdomains and prefixing for now we'll talk about attaching middlewares out here i'm going to say uh, right first let's take all of them off here i'm going to say route dot get and enable the group call auth now guys you can name it anything you really want very first it has to be a group you can name this anything, but you have to make sure it's unique. Every group has to have a unique name. Next, we will attach a callback to it, which means anything inside it will belong to auth group. So now I can say route.get, or most probably we can copy this, paste it here, and take the middleware's declaration out from here, and paste it to our group 
okay and once we are done with everything we have to make sure that we are closing our group so that Adonis knows anything beside it is not a part of this group it is really important to close your groups out here with a method called close now let's go back restart our server come here everything works as expected let's type John, it says you are not allowed, but if I go about, it says we are awesome. So guys, I believe that's all from the middleware right now. See you guys next time. Bye.